Okay. So let us get started. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you all for coming and joining us today. Uh, my name is Matthew. Uh, I'm going to be uh, assisted by our chat moderator, uh, Caitlin, here today. So, Caitlin, can you say hi to everyone? Hi, everyone. Thanks. So one thing before we get started, there will be a handout that will be posted into the chat that you all can have access to so you can follow along while we're working today in Unity. But before we do that, we do have some ground rules that we need to uh, cover here. Uh, your mics have been muted on purpose. If you have program-related questions you would like to ask, please do so in chat, which can be accessed at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Uh, your text will only be seen by the panelists, not all attendees. Any inappropriate behavior will result in your removal from this virtual program. We will try to answer the questions as we go along, but there will be time for a Q&A at the very end of the session. And lastly, a recording of this class will be sent out at a later date. Um, without, with all that, let's get started. So for today's class, we're going to be uh, doing sprites. So uh, we're gonna be covering how to uh, draw sprites, um, how to put them into Unity and how to animate them. So for what we'll be covering as well as, it, sorry. Um, so that's what we'll be covering. We'll be talking about what are sprites. Now for sprites in general, uh, sprites are set, uh, images that basically make up for characters, uh, for objects in the background in specific 2D games. Uh, we're gonna be also making sprite sheets, which is how you showcase the animations for each character in the breakdown of this individual sprites. Um, and then we'll also be showing how to import the art into Unity and then turning all of the art into animations. So let us get uh, shifted on over. Um, were there any questions or anything like that while I get shifted over? Um, none that need to, I am answering them in, in the chat at this time. Okay, great. Okay, so we're gonna be starting off here in Photoshop today. Photoshop is a great uh, resource that we have here at all five locations that you can access to through our Adobe computers. Um, two of our libraries have ECSs that can also uh, give you tablets for which, which you can use to draw on your screen here. Um, I personally have brought up a already pre-made sprite sheet so you can guys get a good idea of what a sprite sheet uh, looks like here. And as you can see, if you zoom in, you can see all of these little dots here on the image. These little dots here are called pixels. Um, all sprites are made up of pixels. Almost um, video games use them to render their characters in both 2D and 3D. Um, but for this case, it, we're doing 2D, so we're gonna basically be drawing with pixels. So when you get started for drawing with pixels, you need to know about what size to start working in. So we're gonna do a new canvas here. And right now it's automat uh, automatically recognizing that this previous piece that we're working in is 480 pixels by 128. Uh, now this is a uh, fine size to go with. It doesn't actually need to be this large. It doesn't also need to be this small. Usually though, when working for video games, you want to make sure that the width and the height follow a 16 to nine ratio. Um, basically, when it's in the 16 to nine ratio, that's the actual size in which most computer screens follow. So the width is usually about 16 inches and the height is about nine inches. So you would want to make sure that all of the work you're doing in your game at least fits this ratio. And what's great about Photoshop too is that if you are wanting to make sure it stays within that 16 uh, by nine ratio, you can actually just type in 16 and then by hitting the little multiplication sign here up in the number area, and then typing in a number afterwards, let's uh, just go with five for this case, and click off to the side, it does the math for you. It's a great tool. And as you can see, it's gonna be very small. And we're gonna zoom in. 
as well. Now, if we go back to our previous image here, you can see these little uh, gray and white boxes. This is actually used to represent the fact that the background is empty. When uh, working with characters such as these, um, you want to make sure the background is empty so that when it imports uh, to our actual scene in our game, that the character themselves doesn't have any extra background behind them. Now, the white for this background can be helpful if you're trying to figure out, you know, drawing and things like that, but we don't necessarily actually need it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to double click on background to unlock it, change it to layer zero, and then we're going to add another layer and we're just going to hide this. And as you can see here, we have a whole bunch of pixels to work with. We're going to go in the top corner here. Okay. I usually like to start in the corner here whenever I'm drawing for pixels. Um, we're going to grab, instead of a brush, we're actually going to grab the pencil tool. And as you can see here, it's already set up in the top to one pixel. But you'll also notice that there's a lot of these little gray uh, cubes and things like that. That's actually because when we made this, I made a little bit small mistake. So we're going to hit new again. The mistake I made here is I left the resolution here at 300 pixels per inch. When working in uh, 2D platformer games that are going to be very basic and simple designs, we don't want really 300 resolute, uh, we don't need 300 pixels per inch. We can be just fine at the basic 72 resolution per inch. So we're going to fix that real quick. And as you can see, after we go back in, do the same thing we did before, it's a lot less pixels of these in the grid. And now we can actually start drawing through here. Any questions on how to set up your uh, Canvas in Photoshop? We did have a, another question for the recommended size of your sprite sheet and uh, other setup options. OK, what's the question? Can you that again? Uh, oh, for the, the whole, just go through the whole thing? Uh, for what canvas size and resolution is best for sprite sheets? OK, sure thing. So canvas size, again, it can be um, any size as long as it follows the 16 to 9 ratio, the proportions are the same. So again, you can do um, the math off to the side or it will do it for you. So I gotta stop hitting enter. So we'll do times, um, we can also just do times 10 and you get 160. And then just make sure that they're the same here. So this would be a 90. But we also want to make sure that the resolution is 72 and not 300 because it'll try, when you have uh, 300 pixels per inch, basically what it'll do is it'll try to make it so that there's um, way too many small pixels um, instead of, you know, large pixels between, you know, the, 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 inch that you have here so it'll try to put more pixel uh in there so you, and you don't want that you want actually less pixels did that help yes thank you no problem now um let's i'm gonna uh, again working smarter not harder is a big theme of these we're gonna grab our character here that we have already ready to go. This is also good for whenever you're working in your own and you want to take other sprites that you've um, downloaded or worked with and want to turn them into your own. You'll just hit uh, select one of them, command C or control C in this case, and then we'll paste it over here to work with. So you can actually come in and basically by hitting uh, the I key on your keyboard, it'll bring up a little eyedropper here and you can actually select a color and it will, you can change it. So if instead we don't want his shirt to be green, we can change his shirt to be blue and we can mess with that here using the pencil tool or even 
just the paint bucket tool since this whole area is like this. And now, let's see here. There we go. So one of the things you may have just noticed there is when I had the paint bucket there that this up here called anti-alias, when it was clicked, at, uh, when it was checked, it decided to dip in to all these other areas and give it another color here that's a little closer to if you blended the black and this uh, blue that we chose. Uh, if you turn the anti-aliasing off, it doesn't bleed into any of the other spots. It will just stay where it wants it to be. But again, you can also work with this, make this a little bit more unique. It's because for this particular character, they don't seem to have a face. If you wanted to, you can give them some eyes. What's nice though too about working this small in Photoshop um, is you don't actually need the stylus so much as you can just do this with a mouse because again, you're just basically clicking and dropping in pixels, little dots as we go. Uh, a lot of people would compare working with uh, MS Paint style or just pixel art. Um, I know Minecraft is pretty popular, um, but uh, when it comes to building blocks, things like that, they use actual squares for which to make uh, buildings, characters, and things like that. So this would be a good uh, correlation between the two. But once we've decided, once we've gotten, I'm gonna close this area. Once we've gotten to the point where we find our piece to be, you know, ready to be imported into Unity, we're going to save as, uh, we wanna save onto the computer here. Um, so as you can see here, this is being saved as what is called a PNG. You want to save your documents uh, whenever you're working in sprites for Photoshop or for sprites for Unity um, as PNGs because PNGs keep translucence. Um, so basically, as you can see that we've already saved this here, um, you can see this little white background behind our two sprite sheets here. Um, but when you actually import it into the software for Unity, this white will go away and continue to be transparent. Um, it's also really nice to, a lot of people who will use uh, PNGs um, will try to do for more trans art that has no background, and say translucent, uh, if you're working in animation, things like that, outside of just doing pixel art. We're gonna hit cancel here because we've already saved this. And we're gonna actually start moving on to Unity now and getting that set up. So while I move on over to Unity, um, were there any other questions? Um, just one moment. Uh, I've had a lot of questions about other uh, design applications you can use for this portion other than Adobe Photoshop. Do yes, you have any actually. recommendations? Um, last uh, class we did, I recommended a Sprite. They're uh, a free website that you can actually draw uh, with pixels um, in the other websites or other free downloadable apps would be things like um, GIMP works pretty well with that. Um, I know that, um, yeah, A-Sprite and GIMP are the, probably the bet, your best bets when it comes to that um, in terms of being having free alternatives. Uh, I did mention MS Paint uh, does technically work for making sprite sheets. However, it is important to note that it does um, not keep a blank background when working in there. It um, makes it uh, actually have a background. So making a PNG doesn't really help too much. You will have to uh, move it over to another software to get rid of that white background. Another question that we have in the chat is how many different poses or frames do you think um, they should create for a sprite walking animation? Um, that is totally up to you. I personally uh, do about anywhere between five and six. Um, what's also nice though is that when you do five and six, you can also add, like there's a lot of, uh, when you loop animations, there are parts of it that are just the same sprite that is just kind of imposed in there. Uh, when we get to actually making animations in Unity, um, you'll see um, the importance of having at least five and six. That's the number that will come up the most for making your animations. Um, 
at least for whenever it's like the walking, jumping, or the movement kinds of animations. There are um, other animations that don't need as many, like the um, in that original sprite sheet we saw, there were two uh, sprite sheets that were in the front were the uh, idle animation. You can get away with idle animations being just two uh, sprites, uh, two sprites put together. Uh, there are people who will do more. I've seen, you know, four uh, upwards to ten sometimes, too, depending on how much effort they want to put into um, the character as it is, you know, just standing there. There are times too where care where developers will add in a if you remain idle for too long, the character starts doing something else. I know Sonic in particularly, uh, whenever you wait for too long on the old Sonic games like Sonic CD, um, he will start you know, tapping his feet and looking at the camera very angrily saying, hey, what are you doing? Um, but again, it's up to you. But for my personal preference, I prefer six uh, sprites per animation for a walk. And we had another question asking if you could show how to duplicate uh, your sprite sheets again. Duplicate? Before we move. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me switch back over then. Do, do, do. So when you say duplicate, do you mean like how I copied this and brought it over to another uh, another um, worksheet? I believe I believe so. Yes. Okay. So. What I did for this particular one is I just used the lasso tool. You don't have to just use that. You can also use the, uh, the rectangle marquee for the selection. It works pretty well since this one's already on a grid. Then you'll hit uh, Control C, which is uh, copy in the, sh uh, the shortcut version. If you're using a Mac, it's Command C. Um, so let's go, I'm just gonna reopen something. We're gonna call, I'm gonna just do, I'm just going to do a random number here. Uh, let's do, that's way too little. And then once we go over to our other scene here, we'll hit Control V, which is paste, and it brings it on over to the other screen here. And from here, if you want to, you can actually make adjustments even in terms of like. You know, see, we have a very blocky character. If, for me, whenever I would work uh, with sprites, things like that, I prefer a bit more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A bit more, you know, more, a bit more anatomically correct. So maybe I would try to like start by sketching over top of it and making it a bit more realistic. But again, that's just me. You can go over top of it like this. and then start working from there to make it a bit more how you want it to look. Does that answer the question? Yes, it did, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna actually leave this open just in case we need to come back here. Uh, so let's go back to Unity. Now, when getting started with Unity, um, we've already set up and opened up our page for Unity. This is what it'll look like by default. Uh, I personally have a, I already have a layout that I like to work in. Um, you might have different preferences than I do, but I personally like to have a lot of things that are available for me to see and work with, you know, so I can uh, work in a nice, quick, easy workflow. So as you can see here, when we open, we have our scene, we have what is called the hierarchy off to the left. I actually like to move this over to the right here because I want to have more space to see the game as it's being played. Um, we also have a scene tab here right next to a actual game tag. This game tag here is when we start playing a game to make sure everything is animating properly, uh, it'll show side by side what the game is. So I actually like to move this down here so that way we can see in both at the same time. Um, down here as well, we have our project tab. This is what shows us all of our assets. So since we need to see this pretty much at all times, I like to move this over here. I'll move this up just a bit. That right there should be fine. Um, we also have our console. This lets us know any errors or anything like that that may be going on. So 
it's important to have that nearby. So I'm going to have this right with our projects as well. And then up next to the hierarchy, uh, I've actually put these two into the same tab. I would rather have them so you could see both of them at the same time. So we're going to separate these two and kind of push them off here. There we go. Oops. Now, as you can see here, this is a pretty nice setup for, uh, for being able to see everything as it's trying to be. There we go. Yeah, this looks good to me. Now, um, whenever you're wanting to you know, keep this layout so that anytime you open it, uh, it always saves this layout so that you don't have to do this every time, what we can do here is we can go to Window, select Layouts, and we can actually save the layout that we have here. And I'm going to save this layout as, um, let's see here, I'm going to call it personal workspace. Again, you can call it anything you'd like. This is it for me. And then save. So what we can do is when we go back to the layouts, let's go click just a random one here. And now it looks completely different. Apparently did not like that. Give me one sec here. Yeah. But so as you can see, I don't really like this work. So I'm going to change the layout back to my personal workspace. And now we're back to it. It does not like when I like to switch workspaces. But we'll get back to it here. So now that we've got our workspace set up, um, are there any questions before we get into actually uh, importing our art and starting to make animations? Not at this moment, but I'll let you know. All right, I appreciate it. So first thing we're going to do here, let's scoot this over just a bit so you can see it. Over in our, over in our assets uh, panel, we have a folder here that says scenes. So what we want to do here is we want to have uh, multiple folders here that we can always have access to whenever we're working in our project. So I'm going to right click, create folder, and we're going to title this artwork because we want to have a place to put all of the artwork that we are going to be making for this game. Then uh, we want a place for our code. So we're going to make a new folder and we're going to call that scripts. Code in uh, Unity is always referred to as scripts. Uh, the language in which we're going to be talking and making our code for today is titled C Sharp Plus. Uh, so if you wanted to ever work on your own in C Sharp, um, you can do that. Uh, this is just a place to keep it nice and neat and organized. Lastly, as well, since we are making animations for this, we're going to make another folder and we're going to title it Animations. Let me make sure that this is capitalized. Okay. And as you can see here, the only as uh, aspect of our folders that is filled out is our scenes because when you open Unity, it actually has some prefab uh, already built into it. So it puts the scenes, uh, puts that into the scenes automatically for you. So to put in art into Unity, we're going to go off to the side here to our folders that have our sprites. So we're going to go make a new folder here. We're going to title it Sprites. We're also going to have a second folder in here too. And we're going to call this Sprite Sheets. Now, the difference between sprites and sprite sheets is a sprite is a single image that can be used mainly just for a background image. A sprite sheet is usually meant for our characters or other, uh, I'll say enemies, uh, other, uh, basically anything that has an animation to it, we'd want to have a sprite sheet for it. So in order to import art into Unity, it's very simple. All you have to do is just go to that PNG that we made earlier, click on it, and then just drag it right in to the sprite sheet folder here. And voila, there it is. And as you can see here, as we click on it, 
the inspector window opens up and it shows you all the different uh, details about our sprite sheet. Um, I personally don't like having this portion open, so we're going to hit the down arrow here. That's not it. Hmm. Oh well. There we go. Minimize an inspector. It's kind of hard to see, but there's three little dots there. As you see where it says person sprite sheet, which you can change right here with these three little dots to make sure that you don't see it. I do have some actual sprites here for this project. A lot of all these sprites, by the way, I got these from one of the uh, Linda, uh, Linda slash LinkedIn learning courses uh, from Jesse Freeman. They had already been pre-made and they're very helpful in teaching uh, these kinds of classes. They're also very helpful if you're just starting out trying to make your own make your own uh, video games and your own sprite sheets. So I'm gonna hit shift and I'm gonna drag these over here. Now that we're importing, as you can see here now, we've got a whole bunch of different items. We've got a couch, chair, things like that that you can click and drag into your game. As you can see, it's very tiny. So we're gonna zoom in real quick by using the scroll wheel on both the Now, as you can see, there's now a chair here. What we can also do, we can make it a little bigger, make it smaller, now that it is in the hierarchy scene. Now we got a little cool chair to have the player sit in if possible. All right, were there any questions about how to import artwork into the game? Not at this moment. Okay. Yeah, that should be pretty straightforward. I just want to make you sure. You did actually, that we did have a request to see if you could redo it. Sure. Um, just one more time. Of course. Thank you. So, no problem. So I'm going to delete our little character here. You need to ask me to delete it, and I'll say yes, it's totally okay. So I'm going to go back to, so off to the side, I have a folder here that has my saved file ready to go it's the png and i'm looking at it and it shows me that as a png file i'm going to click on it and just drag it right into this folder here and there we go easy breezy now uh does that answer the question before i move on it did uh however we did have a follow-up question for hand-drawn sprites or hand-drawn animations? Yes. Um, what, um, sorry, I guess I'm not understanding. So, so the question is, um, would the import process for hand-drawn sprite sheets be the same as what you're currently showing? Um, so yes, basically anything that is a PNG file can be moved in from any, any source, uh, like desktop, folder, anything like that uh, can be imported just by dragging and dropping into the Unity Sprite Sheets um, folder for this case. Um, it is important though to uh, remember that um, when you're doing hand-drawn animation and you've like, you know, drawn your Sprite Sheets by hand, that when you scan it into the computer, that you make it so that the background is deleted so that you do not have an actual background that shows up in your animation. Does that help? Yes, thank you. Okay, so let's move on real quick because we have a few more things to cover. So when you have a sprite sheet like this, as you can see here in the inspector, there's a lot of different things going on here. But when you look right here where it says sprite mode, it says that it's a single image. We don't actually have this as a single image. This is actually for this case, this is nine separate images that need to be cut up and made into an, a, a, a nine separate sprites. So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna click single and we're gonna change it to multiple. Okay, so that part's pretty easy. So let's see here. here. 
in this part here. Ah, here we are. Apply. So what I just did there is, sorry, there's a lot of different things that are trying to get in the way of my clicking on this thing. Um, so as you can see here, there is the sprite editor down here after we've now selected multiple. We'll click on this and it'll bring up our character here. Now, what we want to do is we want to slice this up into individual sprites. Now, in order to do so, I'm going to click this little down arrow here. I can just, yeah, there we go. So it should say slice. I was wondering why I wasn't showing it. It probably just got a little too small. But yeah, whenever you have any issues where it's not showing up all of the words, usually if you make it bigger, uh, it'll show what you need it to look like. So we're going to slice. Um, and we don't want it to be automatic for this. We're going to do it by uh, cell size. Because when you're working with multiple sprite sheets, not every single time is going to be the same. I usually like to make sure that when slicing up sprite sheets, the um, I base it not just by a specific like nine by nine grid uh, for this particular one. I want to make sure that every single one is you know unique and individual. So we want to make sure that we have it correct by cells uh, by the cell size that the character takes up. Um, for this particular one, I, uh, you you can mess around with this on your own depending on how you want it to be done. But for this particular uh, sprite sheet, in particular, uh, the height is of our character is 34 pixels and he's 34 pixels wide um, we also what i'm going to do here is i'm going to slice by leaving the offset and the padding to zero and you're going to see here that the grid has while it's you know slice nine by nine just the way we want it to but it's now cutting into each individual portion here in order to fix that so that we have you know some breathing room for our character to move around in, we're going to change the offset to two on both sides that way because we are square so we want to make it sure that it's even Ooh, that could have been bad and then we're going to also make the padding to two as well on both sides and then we're going to hit slice and as you can see here now we're pretty good and have enough space here Let's zoom in yeah perfect hits right at the edge Ooh. and now it perfectly slices it up so what we're going to do here is now that we've hit slice to we're going to save our work here by clicking apply and now when you click on exit this out when you click on our uh, person sprite sheet we have a little arrow here and now you can grab each individual sprite like so so that's pretty easy um, and makes it a lot um, uh, a lot simpler to be able to click and drag and bring our character into the game. So were there any questions in regards to how to do that? Not for that specifically. Okay, great. Well, now that we've got our sprite sheet, cut up, we're now ready to make an animation for this character. So in order to make animations for sprites, what we're going to do is we're actually going to click on our idle animation. So we've got this part here. And then we're actually going to shift and click to grab the second one of the idle animation. And we're going to take the two and drop them into our game here. When we do that, it's going to prompt us to save our work here. Now, we want to make sure that when we're saving the uh, saving our work here, that it goes to the right folder. Because right now, it's going to try to save it to sprite sheets. We don't want it to save to sprite sheets. We would like to save it to animations. And we're going to call this person idle animation. So what you saw here is the way I've typed this is person idle animation with no spaces 
And the only indicators that they're different words is that person is capitalized, idol is capitalized, and animation is capitalized. This is important to get in the habit of whenever you're saving uh, items or objects into Unity uh, for when we get to the coding aspect of this, because when we code, when a co the way the coding tries to talk to each other is they want it to be all one word. They don't like it when it's two separate words. And they also don't like it whenever things aren't properly capitalized because certain bits of coding are trying to talk to each other. And if you have you know, one aspect of it, um, lowercase as opposed to uppercase, it won't be able to talk to it in the coding. So that's something to make sure you're aware of. And then we're gonna hit save. So we also, do have a question. Sure. Uh, is it easier to slice in Unity or separate the images before adding them to the folder? Um, uh, oh, and the other follow-up to that is how did you know what size to slice? Um, the reason I knew how to, uh, okay, let's actually go back there. Uh, so from, um, to individually put them in, yes, you can do it that way. However, it's actually, um, the reason why it's easier to have a sprite sheet and then cut it up in Unity is because whenever you're putting uh, multiple objects in to Unity, it basically what it tries to do is it tries to, as it's loading the game, it tries to load every single uh, aspect of that sprite. So when you package it like a sprite sheet, it actually makes it less, uh, it takes up less memory for Unity to be able to uh, call back to all of those different files there. So basically um, you have less lag in your game when you're trying to uh, do it when you have a sprite sheet and then cut it up. Whereas opposed to, you know, if you do each individual sprite as you go, it'll start making multiple what is called draw calls. So basically what that is, is whenever uh, the game runs, is it tries to call on all of the different objects that are in the game and if you have too many of them, it'll start to uh, make the game what is referred to as it'll chug, uh, it'll slow down, and it won't be able to run as properly. So that's why we do the slicing in Unity as opposed to uh, individually bringing them in. As for the how did I know the size of this, um, uh, when I before we did the class, um, when I was looking through the character uh, animation the actual size of that PNG, um, it actually said that the height of the character was 34 pixels. So uh, since we're doing it in a square function, I was like, okay, if it's 34 pixels high and we want him to be, you know, the square, so it's gonna be 34 by 34. Um, the offsetting was a lot of guess and checking. Um, I tried offsetting it at one pixel, um, then it was didn't work right. It didn't seem very well. Then I tried three, four, and it was just two ended up being the one I liked the most. So the, whenever you're doing the offsetting for by cell slicing, um, it's a lot of guess and check. But if you already knew that when you were drawing it, that it was uh, X amount of pixels high, that's something you should write down uh, to or have at least a note for it so that it's off to the side for you. Um, I think that answered all the questions, right? I, I don't think I missed anything. I believe you did. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna try to leave uh, the rest of the questions towards the end because we are getting to a point where it's gonna be a lot of work here. So we're gonna uh, try to run through this next portion of it the best we can. And, you know, we get through it and if uh, there are any questions at the end, I'll be more than happy to help with that. So let us head back here to our assets folder and go into the animation. Now, as we have this person animation here, we also now have a, what is called the controller. So we actually, this is great. Uh, we need this to help us animate. And we're also gonna need to make references to this when we write our code later on. While I'm thinking about it, I see here over in the hierarchy uh, for our character, it says person sprite sheet 01. We're just gonna change this to person, just so it's easier for us to remember. And then we also wanna change our person sprite sheet dot uh, underscore zero to just 
have the name person animation controller. And note I did the exact same thing I did when we saved it earlier uh, to make sure that there's no spaces and that the only thing that annotates the different words is the capital letters. All right. So we want to also make sure that our person is selected here. So that way we're actually working with them. Okay. So from here, we're going to go to our window. We're going to go to animation and we want to go to animator. And as you can see here, now we have on game entry, we're gonna have our person idle animation. So as you can see here, if we hit play on the game, oh, give it a sec here. He's now animating and he's going relatively fast. In fact, honestly, it's a little bit too spazzy for my taste. So we're gonna stop our game here and we're going to change that real quick. So let's see here. Okay, there we go. I'll move this animation over here. And then we're going to click on our person. And as you can see here, now that our uh, animation is up here, we're going to see the speed has been set to zero. We want to change this to six. And then we'll play our game here and see if that does this, how that fixes it. Let's see here. There we go. Gosh. Still going a little fast. Let's stop our game there. Let's see here. is okay here we go let's drag our... this is being weird sorry i'm usually used to working in max so this is there's a lot of different things that have been moved around here ah there we go so we're going to create a new clip Now we want to have the person running animation. One thing to note here too, again, is it's uh, automatically defaulting to save to sprite sheets. We want to fix that to make sure that it saves to our animations. And we want to change this to 12 just because we have a faster motion here. So I'm gonna grab oops. Grab our running guy here. And as you can see here, he's got at the zero seconds mark. And then we're gonna grab about 0.5 second sprite, move the third one over at the 10. And then about the 15 here. and so on until we get all of the sprite sheets, uh, the sprites moved over. Now I'm doing an interval of uh, about five milliseconds here, but again, it's up to you to try to figure out where you want it to be. So let's just click the run the animation here to see if this works. Yeah, that looks good to me. So we've got our run animation there now too. It Pause here. So let's grab. So now, we, if you go back to our animator window, you now see that we have both a person idle animation as well as a person run animation. So I'm going to move this uh, run animation over here. Um, we want the animations to be able to talk to each other 
so that whenever we go to our coding, we can hit a button and that'll make our character go from the idle animation to the run animation. In order to do that, it's pretty simple. We'll right click on uh, idle animation, make transition. And as you can see here, there's now a little arrow that's trying to go around and latch onto something. We're gonna have it latch on to person run animation. Move this over here just a bit, make it a little easier for you to see. Then we want the same thing to happen to for run animation because we want our animations to go back and forth with each other. The, so we'll do a make a transition and we're gonna go back to our person idle animation. So this is a good starting point for a framework of animations. So whenever a character is running, jumping, things like that, we're going to have multiple animations that we're going to make and they're going to kind of connect to this idle animation and they're going to move in specific ways um, by setting the parameters and things like that. So speaking of parameters, we're actually going to have, create a way for these now to talk to each other. So we're going to go to parameters, a new parameters, and the type of parameter we're going to do is called a int value. It stands for interval or interchanging. And so what we want to do is we want to make sure that the, whenever we, basically, if we're going to hit a button that's going to cause a change in the uh, int, int value, it's going to make it go from idle to running or from idle to jumping, running to jumping, so on and so forth. So, but for this one, we're going to call this anim state. Okay. So we, now that we have the parameter here, so we now have it saying zero is idle, basically automatically. If we want it to be, uh, say that the anim state is running, we want it to be a different number, basically. So we're going to go from here. So we're going to, on the transition from the, so we're going to click on this, on the transition from the idle to the run animation. We want to make sure that our conditions are set so that instead of being at zero for where idle animation will be, we want it to be a different number. So. We're going to go to conditions where it says list is empty and we're going to hit on the plus sign here to make it equal to one so now if ever it is in our coding whenever it goes to one it's going to say we're now our character is now running then same for this one we want to do the same thing but instead if we want it to go from running to idle we want it to say the animation state is equal to zero now, I know that was a lot. Um, we're getting close to the end here. Does anyone have any questions before we get into the actual texting, uh, the actual texting coding that we need to make for this? Um, there was a question about adding background images like the chair. Yes, what about it? Uh, can I help with? Um, can you show how to add that again? Of course. Thank sure. you. No problem, yeah. Um, oh, I just did that. So, um, so basically, for adding items like this, let's go back to our scene here. Um, it's the same as when you add in a animation here. Uh, we just take the artwork when we're going to go to sprites, and now we can grab any of our items here. Uh, I'm going to grab this little dresser here. Make it a little bit bigger. And it automatically puts it into the game for you. Does that make sense? Yes, it did. Thank you. No problem. OK. So As we stated earlier, with the animation states that we've just made, save this real quick, um, that we've just made, we need to make sure that the uh, script, there needs to be a script that 
tells the game that when you press a specific uh, key, that it changes the animation for you. So we're gonna go into our assets uh, over here into scripts, and we're gonna right click and hit create C sharp scripts. So this new behavior, we're going to title this just animation test. Then we're gonna double click on it and it'll open in Visual Studio here. This is a software that is that you can download free of charge and it connects to Unity so that way it also makes it so that it's a little easier to just get started doing your coding. It also has a lot of stuff that when you start typing into it, um, it will um, start guessing what you're trying to put into the uh, code and it'll help you out a, long, a lot in the long run. So we're trying to make what is called an animator. So let's get some space here between line six and seven here. We're going to make a call to our animator. Now, when working in code, you'll notice here that the capitalized animator, that's the actual bit of, that's the actual piece that's uh, controlling all the animation. The animator that's in lowercase is the animator that is the actual uh, character moving. And you'll also notice that I used a semicolon at the very end of this line. In coding, there aren't really, uh, the, the way you end lines of code is with a semicolon. Not with a period, not with a comma, semicolon is the way you would end a line of code. So this is the end of the statement. And then. Uh, if you want to, oh, it's not oh, there we go. Something about these shares things can get a little rough sometimes, I apologize. But yeah, so as you can see here, we have animator and animator and the line for semicolon. Um, underneath the void start, you can see that there are these brackets here. These are basically paragraphs if you were comparing it to a word. So basically anything that will be inside these two brackets is our as a paragraph that is one specific bit of the coding. So in between the lines here on line 12, we're going to um, want to get the component that the animator is trying to talk to. So we have our animator and we want it to equal get component since we want it to get a component for us. And the component we want it to get for us, let me find the brackets here, ah, there, is the animator that we talked about at the very beginning. Matthew, can you remind everyone uh, what computer language you're coding in? It's C sharp. Okay, so now that we've got a thing that tells us that the code needs to get our animation component, we can now go down here to the second paragraph, which will be what we say, what we want to have our letter do. So if we want A to be, for this instance, to be uh, the trigger for what makes us move from our idle animation into our running animation, we're gonna need to make a code that says, hey, when you press A, the animation will change. So we have to basically make what is called an if statement. So we're gonna say if, and then we're gonna close something off here. Input, so input is, I need to make sure this is capital. Input being our, you know, what we're pressing, what the player is pressing. And we have get key, and that's the key that's gonna be pressed. And we're going to space off. Key code. This is what tells us what code that it's going to, what is the key that's being pressed. And we are going to use A. So I'm going to hit capital A here. And that should end our first bit of code there. 
We're going to also add another bracket here to let us know that the animator will become what you hit A. So, so what it's going to be set, what the word is, is set integer. We want it to be anim state, because remember we talked about that earlier, that we had made the animation interval value titled anim state. So that way this will constantly change it from the idle animation to the running animation, which I need to make sure that these are actually in quotations because this is an actual thing that exists. And we had said that we wanted our uh, anim state to be one. Because remember when we typed in that the anim state is equal to one, that means it's going to go start running. So, but now that we have said that this is true, now we have to do the opposite. So we want to have on, we're going to separate these out here, make it a little easier. So we want this line of code to also end. So we're going to add a semicolon. So if it's not true, we want to say else. So if or, or if not, if else is the way you would write that. So then we're going to add another bracket. If else, make sure we got any The animator is going to now set it to zero. So that was a lot of code that we just covered. Does anyone have any questions in regards to how the lines of code and how the text is talking to each other? Any questions? Is the anim state a variable or a function? It's a function. Well, yeah. So um, what we're also gonna need to do here is we're gonna move our script and then drag it onto our person so that this will tap, so that the script will talk to our character. And we'll be able to see it when we hit run on the game here. Give one sec. Hmm. Does not want to play for some reason. Hmm. Usually whenever there's an error in a thing, it'll let you know what it is. And it's really nice about that. Did I type this wrong? Hmm. Oh, I did type it wrong. See how we talked about this earlier? Key code needed to be capital C. So things to make sure you're paying attention to in your coding is if things are properly capitalized, things like that. I've been talking about it so often, so long during that class, you, you'd think I'd remembered it, but this is a good thing to keep in mind whenever you're working that mistakes can still happen. So we're gonna save our game here. Yeah, and then it goes away, great. Save our game, and then now we should be able to run the game and just, it'll work just fine. Mm. 
And as you can see, it's now running. And now when you hold down A, he now starts running. Then when you hold, take off A, it goes back to his idle animation. And there we go. Still a little fast in his idle animation. We'll have to go back and fix that later. But um, we are pretty much over our time at the moment. Um, I can take maybe one or two questions at best, um, but we will have to end it here. And then tomorrow, we're going to actually start working on making the actual scene for which, which our character can walk around in. We have a, a few questions about his movement towards the chair. They'd like to see him walking. Um, so the actual walking animation is a separate bit that we're going to actually have to uh, code um, in our next uh, class to have him walk towards the chair. Um, I want to mainly focus on how to actually get yourself uh, animating and seeing uh, this portion of it. But uh, that'll be for tomorrow's class. Um, was there any other questions? Just waiting to see if anything comes to see if anything else comes through. Appreciate it. Um, yes, no problem. There is a question about whether or not you will do repetition, repetitious coding, I believe is what they're asking, or if you will ever duplicate the coding to accomplish things um, as the character is moving. I mean, yes, uh, you, there are times where duplicating code will come up and you can just you know, uh, copy paste um, a lot of lines of coding because again, um, you, you should work smarter, not harder on a lot of these things. Um, but for this particular instance of coding that we just did, uh, it's very simple. Uh, there's no real need for a lot of copy pasting code from previous uh, work, but you can, if you were someone who is like, I wanna just you know, go a bit further and a bit more in depth, you can actually um, go to the LinkedIn learning courses that are on Unity and on making video games in Unity. Uh, a lot of those videos talk a bit more in depth on coding. So if you feel you're more advanced and are ready to you know, go on to the next level, um, you should definitely, I would definitely recommend watching those videos as they talk a lot more about how to copy code, how to uh, go from other uh, source codes and you know, take what they need from the lines of code and put them into their own codes as well. Uh, but that's not really what we're gonna be talking about. I really am trying to focus more on the basic how to understand what the coding is and how it's talking to each other. Um, so if you are more comfortable with more advanced techniques, I would recommend going there. And our last question um, is going to be, is C Sharp similar to JavaScript? Is that something you, you're able to answer? Um, I have not really worked in JavaScript in a long time. Um, the language is different from what I've remember of it um they are similar in the terms of like that it's just another language of coding um but i personally have found c sharp to be a bit more what i like because again it seems a bit more intuitive where it's as you want to have this portion of the code talk to this portion of the code um, and unity helps bridge the gaps between that in a lot of ways um, whereas with javascript from what i remember of it was uh, and this to be fair this is uh, JavaScript back in like, you know, early 2000s, um, 2010, sometime like then. Um, the, so it was a very different animal back then. So I couldn't, I couldn't even begin to uh, compare what JavaScript looks like now to what uh, she Sharp looks like. Any questions about the code and whether the syntax is similar to something like Scratch, but um, that that's where I'm gonna say this is our last question, y'all. Oh, that's fine. Um, again, if you do have um, uh, more questions, things like that, 
feel free to leave them in the survey response. We'll we'll see what we can do. But um, we're going to talk more about all of this stuff in the next two coming days. So um, don't be don't be too upset if we didn't get to your question today. We have tomorrow as well as Thursday uh, to cover a whole other uh, bit of uh, coding. So we'll be there. Um, again, coding is a bit so with coding. One of the things you got to keep in mind is that they're all kind of a, a just a different language in how to get what you want for a code. This particular um, software Unity wants to work in C sharp. That's just how it is. Whenever it, uh, whenever you want to make a script, it says create, and it's uh, they want you know a C sharp script. They don't really want uh, a JavaScript. They don't really want uh, Scratch or any of those other codes uh, in this particular setting. But you can, if you understand coding from those uh, other software languages, the transition to C sharp will be. I want to say it was it was pretty easy for me to switch over to C sharp just because of the fact that C sharp I felt was a bit more um, like hand holding in the sense of that the words that are used in the coding are. If you want something to be animated, you need to call on the animator. And then if you want it to make sure that it's changing the states of it, you need to make an if if uh, if true statement, if false statement. So again, like coding uh, all of the different languages, while they're very you know unique and individually uh, different, they're all trying to do the same thing. So if you're working with Unity, though, you're going to want to learn how to use C Sharp. And that is going to be our time for today. Thank you all so much for attending and asking great questions. Yeah. Again, we'll see you all tomorrow uh, around the same time. Tomorrow is going to be about level design. So get excited for that. And we'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you all so much.